Welcome into the latest edition of Sports Birth. I'm Gabrielle Amato. And on our agenda today, first and foremost, breaking Champions League news. We'll get to that in just a couple minutes. Barcelona stay top of the La Liga table. Now five points clear. This, of course, until Real Madrid play tomorrow. We chat on Sufati's performance, analyze Kike Setien's rotations, and debate if it was right to play Messi for a full 90 back-to-back matches. This before heading to Madrid to link up with Iñaki Angulo, who to chat Atletico Madrid, who are in action today, plus preview the match of the week. Real Madrid hosting Valencia tomorrow. And we jet around the world to chat the Premier League coming back today and the new, old Bundesliga champion. Sports First starts now. Welcome into studio. A reminder to comment below, and we'll get to those comments throughout the show. Get out your pens and papers and write down all the action we have in store for you today on BN Sports Extra. Two La Liga Smart Bank matches. Spain's second division live and free, guys. This is a reminder. As I said, BN Extra is completely free. You can sign up with Roku, Samsung TV, Pluto TV, no contract, no fees. Thank me later. Meanwhile, on BN Sports USA, Real Valladolid take on Celta Vigo, while on BN Sports in Espanol, you can enjoy a bar hosting Athletic Club. And later on this afternoon, Osasuna take on Atletico Madrid across both networks. Don't miss out on any of the action today. Let's welcome in Eric Krakauer to the show, who is socially distanced alongside me in studio. A man I know isn't missing a minute of La Liga action, but we're not going to begin with La Liga football. We're going to begin with Champions League football because it is coming back, Eric. It returns on August 7th with the remainder of the round of 16 matches. And then it's headed to our beloved Portugal for a 12-day tournament what do you make of this breaking news, Eric? Well, first of all, if you're Portuguese, this is great news. It's going to be good news for the Portuguese economy. And I think it's also a testament to just how well they handled COVID-19 in comparison with a lot of countries with people basically listening to their health authorities doing exactly as they were told. And now the, the, the rates of transmission are very, very low. And given that the, the country is not very big and the distance between stadiums is a short one, I think it is a really good um, locale a really good place to uh, host this mini tournament. Yeah, and of course, we're a little bit biased, uh, but it is a sensational place. Uh, here is a look at the round of 16 matches that remain, the ones that are not decided uh, way back when. Juventus still have to come back against Lyon. Real Madrid still have to come back against Manchester City. Bayern Munich have pretty much done and dusted this one and all to play for uh, in Barcelona versus Napoli. Now, of course, four teams are already through. Those four teams are PSG, Atalanta, Atletico Madrid, and Red Bull Leipzig. Eric, for you, out of this list, where do you predict the upset? Well, I think, look, you look at Bayern Munich, you look at what they've been able to do in the Bundesliga. I think right now, given the amount of work that they have since the return of the competition, they have to be favorites. And I think uh, Leipzig are up there as well. Of course, with the caveat of Timo Werner probably not playing those remaining games because his deal with, with Chelsea is pretty much done and dusted and he's going to leave at the end of the month, which is a huge blow and perhaps not the right thing to do. But those two German teams, I think, have a distinct advantage over everybody else uh, in the competition. And considering that La Liga has been going on now for, what, uh, a week? It, it seems like an eternity because we've had so many games back to back to back. They have an early uh, start on the competition as well. So uh, maybe putting... Uh, you know, Atletico Madrid may be in that race. Wow, really? So, okay, if you have to, if you had to pick one favorite, would it be Bayern? Because, uh, as you said, they clinched the Bundesliga title eight in a row, uh, 29 in the Bundesliga era, more than all other German clubs combined. It, it's really an unbelievable feat, and a lot of people are now pointing and looking at them as the new Champions League favorites. Would you agree? Yeah, I think so. They've been unbelievable uh, which really shows just what Hansi Flick has been able to do since taking over in the 11th match day of the Bundesliga, taking over for Robert Kovac. And, and just the transformation of that team shows you how much talent is available to him and how it was being wasted by Kovac. Uh, so I think they are the, the, the favorites. They don't have a discernible weakness. All their long-term injuries, for the most part, are back. They are primed to make a very deep run. And I think potentially uh, even winning the winning the treble for the second time. Yeah, well, which, which would be 
Very shocking. Uh, they're not my pick, though. I go PSG. I've stuck with them since the beginning, and I'm still going to stick with them um, through now what's the new norm. Uh, although maybe they're at a little bit of a disadvantage because they're not in action. He yeah. So go ahead. Give us your take on PSG because uh, Thomas Wrong and Gary Bailey, all former players, former coaches, say that they are at a massive disadvantage yep. of not being, uh, you know, perhaps playing matches week in and week out. I mean, physically, they're just going to be at a completely different level. And you can play some, some friendlies, some scrimmages, but it's not going to get you up to that peak of fitness that you're going to have to be in to compete against teams that are actually participating in uh, these uh, leagues that have that have resumed. So while they may have been one of the favorites uh, a few months ago, and, and Gab, you've been saying it from the beginning that this was their year. I just I just don't think they have much of a chance because they're not going to be able to recover. Let's hit the comment section and see what you guys are saying uh, in our comment section. Brendan Burns saying, I've been behind Paris from the start, but I feel like Bayern versus Paris would be the best final. Love the one-off format. Number one, I'm with you, Brendan. I've been with PSG since the beginning. Number two, Bayern versus PSG would be a fueguissimo final. And number three, let's talk about that one-off format. because So th this tournament, this mini tournament, is going to begin in the quarterfinals. It kicks off on August 12th. It goes all the way until August 23rd. And yeah, just like Brendan said, it is a one-off. No more two two legs up until the final. Who do you think that plays an advantage for and who do you think it plays a disadvantage for? We're going to see some upsets, Eric. Uh, I mean... I'm so excited! I, 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 I'm at a loss for words. Look, I think it gives it, it gives an advantage to the smaller team. Uh, that it, Not that there are many. You could call Atalanta a smaller team, but they absolutely lambasted a, most of the opposition once they got on that, running, uh, that uh, winning streak in the group stage when they were essentially out of the, the competition. But you look at the smaller teams and RB Leipzig, who I said could, could win this because of the fact that they've been playing in the Bundesliga, albeit inconsistently, I, uh, in, inconsisten inconsistently. <laughs> I, think there's, I think there's an opportunity there for them to really surprise uh, the bigger teams because you just never know what's going to happen on in any given game as opposed to a two-legged affair which gives the better team a significant advantage you know who i think uh, this one-off affair benefits most I'm looking at you, Barcelona, because the past two years you've been knocked out over huge Good remontadas point. in the second leg. And I think that Barcelona fans everywhere are like, okay, at least that can't happen for a third consecutive year. Let's shift gears. Let's chat Barcelona, who many also say is, I mean, they're always a favorite to win the Champions League. But they were in action yesterday, a 2-0 win over Leganes. It was the first time that we saw some minutes of Messi, Suarez, and Griezmann up front. But I want to begin uh, with the beginning, with the starting 11. Did you agree? with the rotations that Kikas at the end made. No Braithwaite, Ansu Fati in the 11. Uh, Jordi Alba wasn't available. So we saw some action from Junior Filippo. Did you like the rotations? Yeah, who am I to disagree with Kike Setien? He's with the players day in and day out. We knew that this was going to be uh, par for the course, given the, the insane schedule that they have ahead of them. And the fact that they were playing Leganes, a team that is already essentially been relegated. No, I'm being mean. Uh, you are to, being to, mean. To, to Leganes. Because I actually thought they did very well. They defended valiantly. They hit on the counter and they exposed some of the Barcelona weaknesses, which I will get to in a second. But all these players that came into the 11 for the for the most part did well. Barcelona had about, what, 80% uh, possession. So they didn't really drop a, a, drop a beat. Let me just uh, add this point. You mentioned Barcelona as a potential favorite for the Champions League. I completely agree. Not only because they don't have that second leg to, to slip up in, but also because this seems to be a team right now that just looks like they, they've refound that joy in playing. Messi looks absolutely marvelous. When doesn't he? But he looks he looks fresh. The fact that this rotation came into this game shows that everybody can contribute. And it wasn't that long ago that Messi said, look, had the season not been interrupted, I'm not sure we would have won the Champions League given the, the, the form that we were in. So uh, this is a huge advantage for Barcelona, for sure. Yeah, definitely. And having Luis Suarez back is the massive advantage. Also, uh, potentially having Usman Dembele back for those August uh, matches is also another huge advantage. I want to hit the comment section, and we're going to continue our Barcelona chat. Faustino Cisnero saying Fati with the hands up emoji. Love it. Yes, all, here. all hail Ansu Fati. Uh, Raul Rodriguez, Barcelona, they will win it this year. I predict a Barcelona Man City showdown in the final will be entertaining. Uh, Leonga Martin Monono saying exactly Leganes played poorly. I think that they played pretty well considering that they were without 85% uh, of their goals on the pitch. Yeah. On, in the starting 11, 
there was one goal. One player had scored one goal all season, and right. that is it. So really, Leganes not dealt a very easy hand uh, when trying to stay afloat here. Mo Sadi saying, let's see what they are going to do with Atletico and Atleti. Interesting take. Um, the yellow cards concern me, saying Bavon Gray about Barcelona. Um, I do want to talk about Lionel Messi, though. You said he was on fire. He was sensational. He now has 699 career goals uh, for club and country, just one shy of that 700 mark, which I have a feeling that he'll hit it uh, against Sevilla on Friday. Join us for that match. Do you agree, though, with Kike Setien playing Messi for 90 full minutes in both matches? This is a man who's about to turn 33 uh, in just five days. I think it's next week, actually. Uh, should he be resting him against a team like Leganes that you knew you, it was probably going to be an easy-ish win, Eric? Well, maybe not rest him, and I think he was uh, so impactful and so important in that game against Leganes because he had to break down what was a very solid uh, defensive uh, defensive block. Look, I don't think Kike Setien has much of an option, and this was something you guys talked about in a wrap-up show yesterday. Pep Guardiola had issues pulling him off. Every other, co- If Pep Guardiola <laughs> couldn't pull him off, who is going to? But he was much younger then. But I think this could potentially work to Barcelona's disadvantage. As you said, he's going to be 33 soon, and yes, he looks very fresh right now, but if he continues to play 90 minutes every couple of games, and then he's supposed to perform in the Champions League Afterwards, if they get past uh, Napoli, because they still have a second leg to play in the round of uh, 16, whatever happens with those games, uh, Setien has got to be careful. And at a certain point, he might have to put his foot down, and who knows how that is going to go. Right. You would hope that Lionel Messi would understand uh, that it's nothing personal, obviously. Uh, and the other matches of the day yesterday, uh, Getafe taking on Espanol. That one ended nil all. Villarreal picking up a win against Mallorca. We speak a lot about uh, the little team from Madrid, Getafe. You and I, Eric, Eric, we both wanted them to finish fourth. We predicted them to finish fourth. I'm not sure that that's going to happen now, though, because they've dropped points in both opening fixtures since the restart. And I feel the same way as Jose Bordalas did just then. What is going on, Eric? Uh, look, <laughs> uh, obviously they, they didn't uh, resume the league at the, at the very top of, of their game. The fact that they went to Granada without their starting center backs, without one of their top goal scorers, in Jaime Mata was problematic, even though at one point they had control of that game. Granada were, were just exceptional. And so was Carlos Fernandez, by the way, uh, who scored two yeah. uh, the day before yesterday. Jeez, I'm just losing track of these days. But this is going to be a very difficult hurdle now for Getafe because they still have to play Real Sociedad. They have to play Real Madrid. They have to play Atletico Madrid. They have to play Villarreal. I think I remembered all four of those without looking at my notes. So I'm very impressed with myself. And as, as you mentioned, Villarreal doing really well. Two games um, out of the gates and, and two wins, albeit by the, the uh, most marginal uh, of differences. But it doesn't matter when you have six points in the table and when you look like a sure shot to get into the Europa League. Yeah, absolutely. Villarreal back in the race for those European spots. Uh, but speaking about Getafe, speaking of, about Madrid, let's head to Madrid and link up with our Iñaki Angulo because the other team from Madrid is in action today. Uh, Osasuna, hello there. Osasuna hosting Atletico Madrid and an Atleti side in Yaki who's under a bit of pressure. Uh, and now the pressure kind of shifts to Juan Felix, who is back. He's not expected to be in the starting 11, though, right? How are you doing in Yaki? Give us the latest on Atleti. Hi, Gabi. Yeah, it's a must win for Atletico Madrid today. And we'll see if Joao Félix is back in action during the game. As you, I don't expect him in the starting lineup, but he will play during the game. And this is a make-or-break situation for Atletico de Madrid because I think there's a lot of the line, not only for the team, but for the club, because they rely on the Champions League budget for the next season. The revenue is going to drop because of the COVID situation and both things merging, missing potentially the Champions League and the drop of the incomes uh, because of the coronavirus uh, could put this uh, team in a very complicated spot because the club has been growing, has been growing a lot but they need to be in the Champions League. Every big uh, club, club need it but Atletico Madrid need it a little bit more than a normal club so there is 10 games to go and they need it is a must win. I think we just lost in Yaki. Uh, we'll try and get back to him to get the latest Real Madrid news. Uh, but he set us up perfectly, Eric, for the chat about Juan Felix. We don't think that he's going to start necessarily uh, because he is just coming back from injury. But he is expected to be in the starting 11. Is it fair to shift the pressure now all, and all the blame, I'm sure, if this result does not go in their favor, on Juan Felix? 
I think it's fair to to put some pressure on João Félix for sure because of the price tag. You you can never escape from that. And even though João Félix was purchased, uh, keeping in mind that he could potentially be a legend at Atlético Madrid, like Paulo Futre, uh, his Portuguese predecessor who was there for, for, for years, and like Griezmann in his years uh, w with the Colchoneros, now is the time when he needs to perform. They need to get a result at Al Sadat against Osasuna. They were pretty poor against Athletic Club at the San Mamés, although it needs to be noted that Athletic Club looked really good. They looked physically fit. They looked like they were up for the fight. And these are the games, really, where João Félix has to show up. He just has to. Um, because not only of the money that they paid for him, but I just don't see another player on that team. Diego Costa, he scored a goal in that moment that counted against the Athletic Club. But for the most part, he was walking around in that game, didn't look very fit. I'm not sure that Llorente as a second striker experiment, even though he scored a brace at Anfield, worked too well. He didn't see too much of the ball. And when he did, he just seemed to run into blind alleys. João Félix may prove to be the key in this game. And Atletico Madrid have not won in La Liga since the turn of the year. Just two wins in the Super Cup in Saudi Arabia and at Anfield. So the pressure, actually most of it, should be on Diego Simeone. He needs to figure something out here. Absolutely. And I, I'm going to get to Diego Simeone in, in a bit because I want to ask you what exactly isn't clicking for Atleti. Uh, but you spoke about Diego Costa. We speak about Juan Felix and, and uh, Alvaro Morata. The three of them combined, their transfer fees, a quarter of a billion dollars. That is four times what Osasuna is worth as a club. And Osasuna have scored more goals than Atletico Madrid this season. That is simply unacceptable, Eric. Yeah, and who do you put that on? Now, Diego Simeone has, has really uh, been uh, blighted by injuries to his players. Juan Felix actually is, is one of them. Two significant injuries to put him in the sidelines. And really, it's the one guy, one of the guys who's really shown up big for Atletico Madrid. It's the one guy that they were ready to sell, and that's Angel Correa, who had his bags packed for AC Milan. And luckily for Atletico Madrid, that never happened. I don't know what's, what's, what's going wrong. Here, there, there is a, I think there is a lack of assertiveness on the part of Atletico Madrid, especially if you go by that game at San Mamés. They allowed Athletic Bilbao to really uh, dominate possession, to take the game to them. They sat too deeply in the block. And it, it's so diametrically, that, that game is so diametrically opposed to what we saw in the preseason. What we saw in the preseason from Atletico Madrid was unbelievable. A team that was adventurous going forward, a team that looked really loose, and now they just look handcuffed, they look short on ideas in, in, in the attacking third. And after what Alvaro Morata did for Chelsea, or didn't do, I always thought that was a bit of a risk, even though... Ideally and theoretically, he fits perfectly into that counter-attacking scheme of Atletico Madrid's. But this is a really important statistic. They were really good in the, on the counter-attack last season. This, ca this campaign, they've scored zero goals on the counter. And I think that says a little bit about also the lack of producti productivity up top. Definitely highlighting one of their major, sh major issues, which is hitting the back of the net. When I hit the comment section here, Jiben Karama, all that money for Felix and he still can't perform. He's still very young. So cool it, Jiben. Uh, Brendan Brand saying, Juan Felix is a blossoming star. He has to get used to the pressure. You're absolutely right. Richard Murray saying he's a kid. Um, Pelé, Neymar, Messi, Maradona were all kids. Uh, no none of them quite like Juan Felix. Uh, John I saying that stat is pathetic about the Osasuna uh, worth you know, a quarter of what uh, those three men up front for Atleti are worth. It is an insane stat. Uh, Leonga Martin Monono saying bail to Atletico Madrid. Something tells me that wouldn't exactly solve their problems. I'm going to ask you, though, uh, Eric, do you think Atleti are missing uh, Antoine Griezmann, the goals from Antoine Griezmann, or the defensive work of Diego Godin? Because this is an Atleti side that really, uh, historically, have only had to score one goal. That's all they needed. And they managed to always walk away with a 1-0 result. That isn't happening this season. So does that shine maybe perhaps a, a, a stronger light on their defensive work also? I uh, know I don't think so because that's actually the one sec sector that was absolutely decimated by uh, departures. You had Lucas Hernandez who went to, to Bayern Munich. You had the fullbacks, one who retired in, uh, I can't think of his name right now because there's so many names in my head, Felipe Luis. Felipe who went, Luis. Who, Felipe Luis went to Flamengo. Yes. Uh, so that was the area that was destroyed by, by departures. But 
the, the inclusion of Felipe has been super successful. He missed his, the game against Athletic um, Club. His, the first game he has missed through injury in his entire career, which is a remarkable uh, statistic. They miss Diego Odin, but not defensively. They miss him on set pieces on the other side of, of the field. This season, they've only scored six goals from set pieces, 14 in the last campaign. And yes, the answer to your question is Griezmann is the big uh, missing uh, piece here because he did so much in the midfield carrying that ball forward, uh, pulling the strings um, in, in the attack scoring free kicks when it looked like an Atletico Madrid was going to draw another game uh, last season and they've drawn 13 this season so his goals are the biggest biggest missing piece without question. One other point, two other points actually that I want to uh, 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 make with one more point? Diego Costa was bought for what? 50 million dollars? Uh, that was wasted Money 72.6 because, million. Okay, there you go. I was short 20 million. So imagine that. Uh, he, this was this was a guy who was uh, who, whose numbers were de decreasing, uh, and, and he was never going to get back to the 27 goals that he scored in their championship winning campaign. And whoever made the comment about pressure and João Felix, trust me, João Felix doesn't feel much more pressure at Atletico Madrid than he did at Benfica. Because if you play for Benfica, you feel the pressure of an entire nation on your shoulders. Now, what needs to be said there is they play completely different football and he had most of the ball in the attacking third at Atletico Madrid. He's behind the halfway line for most of those 90 minutes. Eric Krakauer, you asked me for one more thing and that was about seven more things, but that's okay. It's one more reason to watch this match this afternoon live on BN Sports and BN Sports in Espanol. Our coverage begins at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. It's a must-win match for Atletico Madrid. You won't want to miss it. Uh, also in action today, the Premier League is back. Uh, we all know how this story is going to end. Liverpool are going to be champions. Manchester City uh, kick off the restart campaign against Arsenal. Uh, if Man City lose and then Liverpool win at the weekend, Liverpool are champs. I want to know, though, uh, just looking at the Premier League, big picture, what stories are you most looking forward to following in this final stretch? Well, I think it's pretty awesome that the, the Premier League uh, is resuming with uh, – with a game that is going to pit student versus teacher in that Manchester City versus Arsenal. Um, you know, and it's, there's so many subplots here because Mikel Arteta was the first uh, player or coach who was diagnosed with COVID in the, in, in the Premier League, and that was the, the, the infection, if you will, that precipitated the suspension of, of that competition. So there's that storyline. There's the fact that he's completely or reportedly completely changed the culture at Arsenal. Um, there was a, a meeting on Zoom that he had scheduled. Some players said that they couldn't make it. And he basically sent them a voice message on WhatsApp and said, listen, if you don't make this, this Zoom meeting, that basically tells me that you don't want to be here. And that is the sort of attitude that certainly wasn't there with Unai Emery, not through any fault of his own. I just don't think he ever got the support that he needed from the board and was and also the attitude that was waning in the uh, last years of Arsene Wenger. So I like that cultural shift and I think it will be really important if Arsenal are to uh, get into the Champions League. And boy, wouldn't it be amazing if he beat Manchester City at the Etihad and gave Liverpool uh, the, the, the title uh, this weekend? Yeah, it would, certainly would be uh, very dramatic. I want to hit the comment section here. Bavon Gray, I think top four is the most important outcome at the moment in the Premier League. It really is uh, what is to play for. Who do you predict to finish top four, Eric? Ooh, I'm going to go with uh, Leicester, obviously Liverpool, Leicester City, and Manchester City. Manchester City probably second. You know what? I think Manchester United might just really? creep up. Yeah, I, I think so. You know what? There's, I feel like there's a new attitude there, too. A lot of it came with Bruno Fernandes from, from Sporting, and I'm not being biased. Read yeah, the, we are. Be, no, I'm not. Read the, read the reports. And out of all the games that he has uh, played in in the Manchester United jersey, only one of them against Watford did he not score or get an assist. So there you go. That's the influence that guy gives that team. All right. And last question from the comment section. Someone earlier in the show said Lewandowski Ballon d'Or. Are you for a Lewandowski Ballon d'Or this year? If he wins, he wins the Bundesliga title, obviously. Top scorer, 31 goals and counting. What's the route for Lewandowski to win the Ballon d'Or? Champions League. He needs, That's it? he needs to win the Champions League. If he wins the Champions League, I think he's got a very good shot. If he beats Gert's, Gert Mueller's record, his shot increases. So, uh, I, listen, I think he could be a, a, a real favorite here. I am very much. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, our producer's asking, do they win the treble? I'm going to say 
No, because there's always a surprise. Oh, so, so which one do they lose? The Champions League. Ah, but they're your favorites. Oh, my goodness. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us. That was such a fun show. Someone said, uh, David Martin, uh, I love seeing Gabby and Eric together on the show. We absolutely love doing it together also. This is a reminder. Uh, continue to watch our La Liga coverage. We're having 110 matches for 39 days straight. We are on day six, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So join us at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern time uh, for more La Liga action. You definitely won't want to miss that Atletico Madrid match because it is a must win. And every Every day, if you guys are working, join us at 6 o'clock because we recap the entire day with the Express Wrap-Up Show. It's a blast, and we always love when you guys join us. Thank you so much. Have a fabulous, what day is today? Wednesday. Bye, Happy Big Hump Soccer Day. Heads. <laughs> ciao, ciao.